Okay, so what we have here is a Toyota 4Runner with the 4.7. That's kind of shoehorned in there, isn't it? That's a big one. That's what they put in the Sequoia. So this one did a little bit of, uh, what, do you, what would you call it? Puddle splashing. This V8 model has a vented wheel well splash guard that goes right to the intake. So before the water went down this hole and hydrolocked and busted the connecting rod, the uh, water had to come through here. And before it went through here, it came in. You can see all the meat on these tires. It came in through that vent right there. So the water got flushed up into here with some force into the fender. And then from the fender, because this is the, you just tap that same thing there. You can see there's a little bit of opening here. I don't know if you can see that light right there. So it came in through here through here and through the vent and that was enough to get the water up in there that we see so the best thing to do is to get these all filled you know these holes here I think this is to allow for better airflow uh, going to the air filter I don't know if it has it on the other side we could take a look that'd be interesting wouldn't it so on the other side where there's no air intake there's nothing there but this one hole so that is what that's for, is for air to get in. So you have a current of air that's being induced through here, just like an induction motor on your home furnace or an induction fan. You have airflow there already. You've got a big mud tire. It's throwing high volumes of water into that airflow, and that's how it got in. And successfully hydrolocked it to the extreme. So what we're looking at here, if I back out, you can see pretty clearly that that's the spark plug hole. Let's turn that so you can see. So as I go down the spark plug hole, it's like a little keyhole surgery. All right, so going down the hole, you can see a little bit of shine on that, and then there's a line halfway through right here. You can see the line with the shine right here. So I'll go ahead and go up and down. So he's turning the crank back and forth and you can see that there's just zero, zero movement. Just nothing at all. And if I shake the car, you can see that line wiggle. That line's just water rocking back and forth in the cylinder. The cylinder's got about 25% 25 capacity, 25 capacity water. I was up late last night working on this. Forgive me for my lack of vocabulary and eloquence. Um, so we go down a good cylinder like this one and you can see the piston pretty well. Let's go down the hole again just so you can see. So we're going down the spark plug hole. There's a clear picture of the carbon. Now because this one's not half full of water, it's a lot easier to see. Oh, you're already turning it, aren't you? Oh, yeah. So you can see the piston going up and down. It's really easy to tell um, that this connecting rod is not broken. You can see I've marked it green. That one's red. So we'll go to the next one. Going down this cylinder hole. All right, go ahead. See this one's moving up and down. It's not moving as much because it's near its uh, top of the stroke. So it's changing direction as he's doing this. So there's just not a lot of movement. But we can see that that one's good. I marked that one bad the first time because I didn't know any better to expect that little amount of movement. So we're going down on this one. This is the last one on this side. Get down on the camera. Go ahead. This one's real easy to tell because it's in the middle of its stroke. He's cranking it back and forth because this engine will not revolve all the way. Okay, that one's good. So we'll go ahead and go do the other side. So we're on the first cylinder here. Put that in there. Go down the spark plug. This is incredibly hard to film, by the way. You're welcome. All right, so there's the top of the piston. Go ahead when you're ready. You can see that going up and down. It's a really good shot I got on this one. Man, I'm good. Go down the next one. So I got to keep the monitor in frame and go down the hole with the other hand and fight fuel lines. Alright, when you're ready, 
Okay. You see that one's moving up and down. It's like zooming in and out on your camera. Go down the next one. All right, when you're ready. You got to be careful that you don't get smacked on the lens of your camera and scratch it up. Okay, good. Wait. Go down the next one. My assistant today is Devin. He was the one that starred in the Jeep engine swap video. That was his Jeep. But this isn't his car, this is his friend's car. His Jeep made it through the puddle actually. <laughs> so he's got bragging rights. Let's hear your roar. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, so when you're ready, go ahead. Alright. So you can see where my thumb is. I'm not wiggling up and down. I'm holding perfectly still. The piston's going up and down, so that one's good. So here's the score. Here's what happened here. I'll turn this off. And by the way, this Whistler thing is awesome. I bought this one from uh, O'Reilly Commercial. And it's just does a great job at got a teeny tiny little camera fits down the hole making this into a little tool review um, you can turn the light on and make it uh, not bright and then increase the brightness on the flashlight part of it you can stick it in your ear and see inside your ear see if you got an ear infection uh, your nose so there's the camera um, you can rotate the angle of it you can change the brightness of the display brightness of the light like I said before the thing's just awesome. I love it. I think I paid 120, 140 bucks and it's worth every penny. Really speeds up diagnosis and it really gets you into those. I stick it down the spark plug hole like we just did here and it's a really nice way to look at the top of the piston and see if you have any uh, kiss marks, if the pistons have hit the valves. All you got to do labor wise is pull one spark plug and then you've got access to look in the cylinder. How cool is that? So let's do a little explanation over here with the chainsaw. Here's the way that this works. This is a two-stroke engine, which means that it just goes up and down. You know, down is a stroke, up is a stroke. A four-stroke engine is a little different. You know, the piston goes down and it pulls in, it draws in air-fuel mixture, and then it, the valves close. You know, the intake valve was open for that to happen. Then it goes up, the intake valve closes, and it compresses all that mixture, and then the spark plug goes bang and it goes down so that's two strokes and now we're full of smoke and now the fourth stroke the exhaust valve will open and it shoves all the exhaust out so that's the fourth stroke so intake stroke you know induction stroke it takes in all the uh, air fuel mixture and then the compression stroke where it smashes the air fuel mixture and then the combustion stroke or bang stroke bam you know the spark plug fires and then the exhaust stroke it shoves all the exhaust out so anyway, that's how that works, but just mechanically what's happened to this car, you know, as this rotates around this, you can see there's a pin that goes through here, and the piston goes up and down as you rotate it. So you can see the balance weight for the crankshaft. So you got this going up and down, up and down. So this is the connecting rod. This is what broke on that uh, forerunner. It probably snapped about right here. Now unfortunately when you have an engine being driven, especially a V8 with all the rest of that power and the rest of the cylinders being happy to just go nuts, is when you get water in there, um, it sucks it in on the intake stroke through the air filter and we'll show you some more details about the intake and the water that went in there. Uh, but what happens is it sucks in water so now when it goes to compress the air fuel mixture um, you're in trouble. You know, you can get all the water in the world in a two-stroke motor and not have it be a problem. You can't do that on a multiple cylinder four-stroke engine because the other pistons are going to go bang. They're connected to this uh, crankshaft and so while the other one's going bang and getting shoved down, this one's being rotated and getting shoved up. When it gets shoved up and there's water in there, water can't be compressed. You know, that what, it, what little airs in that cylinder will be compressed but ultimately it'll hit that water and then this will just snap it just gets shoved up BAM it just gets busted so that's what happened on that back cylinder on the passenger side of that forerunner um, so we're going to show you what it sounds like after showing you the hole that happened in the because once this is uh, just loose and flying free and has all the force of another piston explosion um, they, 
uh, basically it just goes through the side of the engine. So we'll show you that hole and uh, once that happens the engine's done. You know it's just it's uh, scrap pretty much. It's spare parts. So we're gonna crank it over. We're gonna crank the uh, engine backwards because it'll go backwards till it hits the block and then it'll go forwards till it hits the block. And unfortunately um, where the vehicle was at it already had that damage happen. You know the broken uh, connecting rod but also the crack in the side of the block so we're gonna line it up and we're gonna show you what it sounds like for educational purposes okay so that's the bad cylinder right there you know you can see the hole of the red paint these are all the other good cylinders uh, that don't have broken connecting rods we're gonna go over the fender I'm gonna try to keep this all in line so go over the fender going down into the wheel well Hang tight folks, it'll focus in a minute. So we look at the side of the engine block and we can see that there's a bunch of cracking and you can see where it's actually punched through. It didn't completely blow it out, but you can see the oil stain that tells you to go ahead and look up above and you can see the break in the side of the engine block. That's really sad, it's unfortunate, um, but there's nothing we can really do looking back you know what it is is what it is this engine blocks toast we probably have some good cylinder heads to salvage off of it but there's actually a lot of those on the market <laughs> they're not actually that valuable on these so anyway we're gonna go into the tripod and we're gonna show you what it sounds like um, when you crank over an engine that has a broken connecting rod and I've showed you rod knock I've showed you all kinds of you know seized engines we're gonna do this so this is what it sounds like when you crank a hydrolock motor over. That's not good. I think it broke through. <laughs> we have pulled, because we have the fuel lines undone and everything, um, we have pulled out uh, the relay for the fuel pump. So that's what it sounds like. It's just locked up and it's just a real hard, nasty noise. As I said before, we can turn the motor a little bit. We can crank it back and forth. Um, but once you rotate it to where it binds on that floppy connecting rod, you're just stuck. It just isn't going to move after that. So. I well, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. Our condolences to the owner. It's kind of unfortunate. At least he does have some money coming windfall, so he'll be okay. And uh, if you haven't subscribed already, of course, click subscribe, like, comment, and uh, I'll see if I can put a link in the description for that little camera. That camera is a really nice tool to have. Thanks for watching. So we just did the sound check. We just showed you what it sounds like when you have a thrown rod or broken connecting rod. We look at here and it looks about the same. It didn't really damage it any worse. Probably that happened while the engine was running. Of course, as we're cranking it now, you've seen all the spark plugs are out. Now, there's a significant thing about the spark plugs being out. For one, the engine can't run and run under, you know, the combustion stroke or the explosion stroke, whatever you want to call it. I call it the explosion stroke, but then I look like an idiot, like I'm saying diesel gas instead of diesel fuel, which I'm fine with. I like saying diesel gas. But my point is, is with all the spark plugs out, there's no compression. You can't compress, so, and of course there's no ignition, so I think that's what they call the ignition stroke. That sounds smarter. Okay, I'm on board. So anyway, it uh, didn't really damage it that much worse. That's just the way things are. Snorkels, who needs them?
Oh my gosh, was that chocolate milk?